What's up guys? So again, I want to talk about uh, something I read. Um, I was sent a book by our uh, high school president, Eric Ongeri. He's a man of God. I will link his uh, website uh, down in the uh, description. Um, he sent me a book titled The Unseen Realm. So we have been trying to meditate with him uh, on uh, these, mat these spiritual matters. So he's helping me navigate the spiritual realm. He's way ahead of me, so I have been seeking his help. Um, uh, so he sent me this book titled The Unseen Realm by Michael S. Hazer. And I was going through the book, as always, Flag Ya Jeshi Koju. And you can see I'm wearing I'm wearing a jumper by Equity Afia. So as I, I'm always saying, we need to provide health care to people. And so Equity Afia does that. So I was going through the book. Is in a chapter called the first chapter. It's titled Reading Your Bible Again for the First Time. Hmm. Interesting. And Michael notes that in the Bible, the term Elohim is plural. So I googled the meaning of... Uh, so, so he gives an explanation. He says, uh, the God of the Old Testament was part an assembly, a pantheon of other gods. So it was a collection of gods. God is a collection of gods. Mm. What does that mean, that God is a collection of gods? If you Google the term pantheon, it means a group of particularly respected, famous or important people, or all the gods of a people or religion collectively. Now, that brings the question of, how do you solve the problem of multiple religions? Because, for example, me, I come from the tribe Agikoyo. We had our God, who we believed lived in Mount Kenya, Gai. The Maasai had Enkai. The Hebrews, the, the, those people who lived where, the Israelites, that is, they had God, the God we worship right now. The Muslims have Allah. The Hindus have their gods. So do the Chinese. So do the Japanese. So do different tribes across the world. The Rastafarians have Isla Selassie. How do you solve the problem of multiple gods? So who do we worship? Who is true? <laughs> now, to examine that question deeply... You have to ask yourself the question of what is a God? Who is a God? What entails a God? And so to answer this question, I will give you an illustration. Now imagine all human beings are monkeys. Actually, we are monkeys in any sense. We are apes. But imagine a troop of monkeys. If you have 200 monkeys, you put them in a park. The first thing you will notice is that these monkeys will organize themselves in a hierarchy. And a hierarchy is usually shaped like a pyramid, which means there are monkeys that will be on top and there are monkeys that will go down until the lowest level monkeys. And the fewer are at the top and the most are at the, at the bottom. It's, this is an interesting topic because we are heading to the period of elections and we are electing the top monkey. <laughs> so this is an interesting illustration. Now, we begin to notice that there are specific qualities that elevate a monkey to the top. It could be being big and being a bully, even though that is not usually sustainable for a long time. It could be being good at reciprocation. So you are loved by other monkeys. So people are monkey, eh, monkey, eh, monkey, eh, monkey, eh. And so the monkey goes to the top because it is loved by all the monkeys. Now, first of all, you have to ask yourself, 
what is this quality that a monkey has to possess for it to end up being at the top? Now, to, we, we, I'm, I'm trying to explain what is a god, right? You have to understand the concept of a hierarchy that it is not the monkey that is making itself to be at the top. It is the fact that it embodies a specific aggregate of qualities that makes it to be elevated as the top monkey. And so, God is the monkey that is embodying all these characteristics so much to an infinite level that it even is outside the hierarchy. It is above the hierarchy itself. If the hierarchy is here, God is here. Because God embodies the spirit that makes a monkey rise to the top so much that he is outside the hierarchy. If it is love, it is love to an infinite level. If it is reciprocation, it is reciprocation to an infinite level. If it is hard work, it is hard work to an infinite level. So all those values, infinite value, and each value to an infinite degree. That is the idea of a god. And that is why we respect that idea. So God, this makes you begin to think that God is not a being. God is an idea. That's a controversial statement, but I will explain. Why am I saying this? Remember, we evolved in the savannah. We evolved with physical things. We did not evolve with ideas. Ideas came later on. We evolved with concrete things. So if we, we evolve a thought, we have to embody it in something physical, a being. Because we evolved in the savannah grassland seeing rabbits and lions and cheetahs and leopards. We did not see ideas. We saw things. So even though God is an idea, we have to embody this idea inside a being. And that is why the Greeks had their gods. That is why we embodied our God to be in Mount Kenya. That is why Christianity views God as the Trinity, as heaven, as seated on a throne. We have a, it, it embodies him as a father, a father. That is why the Pope is a father. That's why uh, the father of the Catholic Church is a father. That's why your pastor is your father. Right? We embodied this idea inside a being because we, we did not evolve with ideas. We evolved with beings. And so even though God is an idea, we have to embody that idea inside a being. So basically, a God is the embodiment of of the spirit that a monkey can embody for it to end up being at the top of the hierarchy. But this being called God embodies these characteristics in an infinite level. It embodies, this, it embodies infinite characteristics and each characteristic to an infinite level, to a level that it ends up being above the hierarchy of monkeys. Are you understanding? Now, this, the reason why he says that Elohim is a plural name and that the God of the Old Testament was an embodiment of gods, it's because, you see, tribe A had God X. Tribe B had God Y. 
Now, because of civilization, these tribes would interact. Now, because they have different beliefs for each gods, they would end up fighting. And in mythology, this is viewed as the fight of the gods. But ideally, it's a fight of exchange of ideas. My God, believe, my God is this. Your God is this. My God is this. Your God is this. It's an exchange of ideas. And so, ultimately, for these tribes to call coalesce and to live together, God X would end up marrying God Y and they would merge and become God Z. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Because we, we the tribes interacted, we ended up marrying our gods together and so God is the collection of gods. God is the marrying of all the gods of all tribes, forming God. You can see an example when the colonialists came, no, when the missionaries came, they brought a new God. But we, the Africans, married that with our gods and we developed the Pentecostal churches. That's why we have a church like, uh, like the Akorino. They traditionalized the new God and made him traditional in accordance with our God. So God X marries God Y and it becomes God Z. And that is why he's saying Elohim is a plural name. It's because Elohim means a collection of gods. It means an assembly of gods. That is God. God, the ultimate God, is a collection of gods. Now, because time is going, I will continue with this idea. Now, as always, like, please like and subscribe. And if you like the video, share it to other people. And let's continue on the discussion in the chats. Peace out.